Welcome to Baker Day Presents. We're here today at Temple University in the kitchens at Johnson Hardwick Hall. It's a working kitchen. You might hear some noises, there might be some people in the background. And today, they're actually doing some testing of the fire alarm system, so there may even be some extra noises. I have a very special guest today. It's Chef Joe Wiley. He is the chef here on campus at the Student Center. And he has brought with us his mother's recipe for glumpke, which is also known as stuffed cabbage. Coming right up. Welcome, Joe. How you doing? Thank you. So, uh, what'd you bring us today? What are we making? Today we're doing stuffed cabbage. Um, in the world of uh, Polish cabbage. people, we call it galumki. Nice. Um, I um, I actually was raised up by grandparents who are Hungarian. We also had stuffed cabbage. Right. So I'm interested to see how similar, how different it is. It has so you, you're Polish. Polish. Like Wiley doesn't sound Polish. No, it's necessary. Irish. But, okay. But my grandfather was Irish. My mother, my grandmother was Polish. So uh, we, the tradition always, we grew up Polish. You made a Followed, lot of Polish yeah, dishes. Yeah, a lot of Polish dishes. Awesome. Um, you know, and this was one of the you biggest You grew up things. in this area? Up in the far northeast. Um, but my family was from Kensington. Okay. Originally, so um, they did this. This, this was like a big deal. This is, I know. A few my, times a year. Yeah, when my grandmother did it, this was a big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was an all day I affair. I think it takes a long time, yeah. Like it we does. Used to do it, I think in a crock pot. Actually. Yeah, it we does. A big crock pot and we just Because cook all day. Um, they used to do such a large amount because there were so many kids. Right. And, uh, How many know, kids did they have? Five. Okay. So, you know, and it was a tiny house down there. Yeah, it always um, was, right? Like, yeah, very, very tiny. Don't even know how Back they, in the day, like my, uh, my wife's grandmother I think they had like 13 kids and in a little row and like a three-bedroom row home I mean right. it was this tiny little house in the Northeast and 13 kids I don't know how they did it right. I think one is more than enough for me right uh, so you have to start with cabbage obviously yes I feel like this was cheap for them like this was like a cheap meal that fed a lot this of people very, back in the very, day this was a very cheap it might meal. be more expensive nowadays <laughs> probably cabbage is still you're getting that cheap but uh, we start with the cabbage um, she always specified to get the whitest heads of cabbage, not dark green. The whiter heads were better. Um, obviously, if you use the darker ones, I wonder it's, if it's sturdier because it cooks so long. I don't know if it's sturdier. I think it's the difference between the taste, the bitterness okay. after a while. Um, that makes sense. When, you, when the darker cabbage, it just gets really, really dark. The lighter, it, it, even after you cook it, it still remains kind of light. Um, so what we always did was core out the cabbage. Um, and then we would rinse it and you have to rinse it good because these are uh, they're so tightly packed yes you know what I mean like yes. it's hard, like if there is any dirt in there it's still in there yeah you know what I mean so you have to really get in there and rinse it good right and then she, she would rinse it uh, she would fill it with she says to fill it with water and then drop it in the boiling water but we don't have to just, do that you have today. to just make sure that the, that the yeah, she wants to make too. sure that Another thing is you want to steam it from the inside out. Right. So that, and you leave it in there just long enough that the leaves would fall off and easy enough to, to roll. So what awesome. I'll do is I'll drop it in the water. Try not to hurt yourself. Try not to, it's a hot water. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> Here. It's floating a little bit, but. Go sideways. There, there you go, the water's, the water's getting inside it, so that's perfect. All right, so we're gonna cook that a little while. Um, we need to work on some meat, I think, right? Absolutely. At some point. So we're, right now, you're the chef at the Student Center, right? Yes. So you are in charge of all the delicious food that the kids eat here at Student Center. A lot yes. of retail outlets, right? Yeah, all retail outlets. All re retail all outlets. Retail outlet, 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 yeah, outlets. So um, not the all you care to eat, but the places where you, you know you get a burger and fries or whatever. You know, how, or, how long you been a chef? Um, been doing it, I've been in the business over 20 years. I probably, in my 20s is when I became a chef. So I would say like 15 plus years. Was any of this inspired by your grandmother's cooking? Uh, some, <laughs> some, um, getting out there and just working. I got inspired. Learning to do this dish and, and seasoning everything. Um, she said you have to be very, you know, not precise, but it wasn't heavily seasoned. Right. And Fairly me, plain. I like flavor, I, order of operation. I season everything in order. 
Um, a lot of chefs. That's are your like chef that. thing, right? That's I mean, a that's lot of that's a lot of chefs are like that. So, so you're you brewing this dish when you make it. Uh, like probably. <laughs> I, I still to this day when you she make makes it, it, she calls me over. We try to make a, and I'm trying to add more to it. And she's no, 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 you know. And she's still pushing me away and not to do all that. But I'm trying to keep. I'm still trying to learn it her way. Even though uh, every time we make it, um, it's different. I'm trying to memorize all the the recipes as far as because uh, none of them are ingredients. Down. Yeah, nothing's written down. It's like a and teaspoon. It's, of this. it's like now it's like a pinch of this and a pinch of that and a smidgen of this, a dash, a drip. You know, and it, and it and it's it's crazy because I'm trying to to write it down so that I can my children can learn right, this. Right. I can bring all my kids up. Like generations from now, they can make the same dish. And, and trying to and, show them a recipe, and she's like, oh, I, I don't know, I can't really give you a, a, sp a specific amount of this and that, and you know, it's just you gotta just gotta, you know, a little bit of this, that. You gotta taste it. You gotta, you know, mix it around and see what it looks like and smell it, and so. Um, so the cabbage doesn't take very long. No, it doesn't. Um, it, you know, the bigger the head, the longer. Um, this. Like you can see the the, the leaves. leaves are starting totally to peel, peel, like actually fall off some yeah they're starting to peel away and that's that's good yes like we want that that's exactly so what if you, you can want. get that out of there try Woo. it's a heavy one right yeah and it's filled with water too yep so we'll turn it we'll set that aside down so it drains so it drains a little bit we'll set that aside we can uh even turn that over okay. just so you don't knock it over when you're over here okay and we got to get some meat going man yep so pork we're using all pork all pork. What's the reason? Because I, I know growing up, we did half and half. We right. would do half ground beef and half pork. pork. And I remember my grandmother telling me that when she was a kid, right. they did all pork. Right. And here you are bringing all pork to it. Like, yeah, well, uh, is beef back in Poland was apparently uh, was hard to get. Um, and it was for... It was for you know the milk, and you know if you did have beef, it was it was a luxury. Like your uh, pork your was very cheap. Yeah, <laughs> pork was very cheap. Um, still nowadays, it's still cheaper to get pork than it is beef in stores. Right, um, relatively so expensive. I do have family members that do make this with beef, and I don't like it. I'm, You're not because you grew up with it being pork. Mom's made it like this for so long. The pork and has I, so I much more fat in it. I uh, feel like it's, it's going to be more I don't flavorful. Know. There's something about it that makes it taste so much better. So this is literally just ground pork. This isn't sausage. It's already seasoned. No, this isn't. Just this is ground just pork. ground pork. Yeah, don't don't modify it. I, I even asked about. Hey, can we put that? No, no. Just keep it the way it is. Right, because you want um, as little flavor as possible. Yeah. That was the deal, right? <laughs> So it's funny, I kind of remember when I was a kid, uh, I always, and don't take offense to this mom, but I always thought she was a wonderful cook. And, she, and you are a wonderful cook, don't get me wrong. Once I went to culinary school, I realized that food could have more seasoning. Yes. I didn't realize, that I thought that that's how it was supposed to yeah. taste. And then I learned that things now, sometimes I get accused of over seasoning things, but. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, so we, we have our pork. I probably want a glove for this just because. Yeah, absolutely. it's pork, right? I mean, because yep. you're mixing it up. This is your you're doing it. I'm not doing this. I'm not getting a mess on my get show. You know what I mean? Get, you don't want to get dirty. I'm on the your king. Show. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, we got some salt. Okay, so it's ground pepper, pork, right? Um, it is, it is rice. Um, she always says to par cook the rice till till it still has a bite, because you're also obviously you're stuffing it in the cabbage, so it's going to continue to bake and right. swell. So. I, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong with this, but I feel like with these, a lot of recipes like this, like if you have uh, even stuffed peppers, if you have like whatever. Right. The rice is kind of there to absorb some of the fat, right? I mean, pork is very fatty and you don't want to throw it. That and there, right? the that, and the... Well, that and coming up, um, it was an easy thing to stick in there. It stuck to your ribs. It's a filler, It's right? a filler. It makes the little it's bit of pork a, you can afford go a little further. Exactly, and this, this type of meal um, would go for a week. We would always have, you know, cab stuffed cabbage every, you know, every night, or we would make so much and freeze it. It freezes wonderfully. It freezes great. Yeah. So um, that's. So it was always ready to go. That um, was the thing too. I remember. I remember as a kid, like, you would cook something like this. You would make like eighty portions of it. It seemed oh yeah. like. Oh yeah. And you would cook, like you hands said, maybe for the week, or even just put in the freezer. And next week, it's also there, and whatever. Like it was, yeah. It was a lot easier to do that. So, so it's she, almost equal portions. Yeah, almost equal portions. She always says, uh, sometimes go a little more heavier on the pork, and a little bit lesser on the rice. Ah, uh, one because, of those people. Well, because you know the rice it, it expands, it swells, right. it almost takes over. 
And right. then you start thinking, is it all rice and not filler? That's true. Um, so I'm going to do is put, I'm going to put maybe put three quarters of rice in, in the rice. Sure, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do three quarters. We'll uh, put a little bit of pepper. Yeah. <laughs> More than that? Yeah, a little bit of pepper. Okay. She's going to probably scream if she how wants to. How about the just show. salt? Is that That's good? all is that she good? would probably want. <laughs> but. I like a little, you I like, like to a little taste more it, salt, so right? we're going to do a little more salt than this. And then we also have some marjoram. She says a little bit of margarine. And and a little bit of thyme. Thyme. She says, or one or the other. Or you just Whatever don't you have, got. Or you just don't have to put any in there. I'm like, uh, well, you got to tell me something here. Let's not, let's not actually to season anything. I'm trying to duplicate it here so that uh, everybody else knows how to do this. Right. <laughs> so that's all your meat stuff, right? You're yeah, good. That's, that's, like, start mixing up, man. Yeah. Like you're making like a meatloaf at this point, right? Yeah. So you mix it all around. And then once that's all mixed up, uh, you set that aside. And then look about like the right amount of rice. Yeah, it looks it looks exactly like we would do it. Um, of course, I was always trying to pre-cook some of it to taste it, and she's like, "No, no, no, just 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 like that. Don't taste it." You have no sure. idea if it tastes yeah, like because yeah, you want to make sure it tastes good. I want to make sure it tastes good, and she's like, "No, no, we don't. We didn't pre-stick it on the stove and fry it up." And I was like trying to fry a little bit up just to make sure <laughs> just that the to meat, see if there's enough, enough salt and pepper. No, you can add that later after you cook it. Really it really doesn't. It's not the same though when you add it later, no, right? I mean, not at all. So we got our meat mixed up. We're gonna set that aside. We're gonna go ahead and make our sauce. Right. So I've seen this done a gazillion different ways. Yes. Um, this is pretty easy, though. Yeah, it's it's it, like I said, it was uh, we were poor, so it was the it was the easiest way to go. Right. So we actually have uh, tomato soup, condensed tomato, tomato soup, soup, which we're basically like kind of redoing here, because we're adding the just like you would make the soup, like a can of of the condensed and a can of water. So we got equal parts. Equal parts. Yes. It was a pretty loose sauce. But it, but it cooks out a little bit. I mean, you're cooking it for hours. Yeah, there. Some of it, that moisture is going to dissipate. Absolutely. And it also, it, it'll gradually thicken, actually, believe it or not, over, so, time, in, right. in, over the glumky, over time. Glumky. That's so yeah. fun to say, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to teach my five-year-old how to glumky. say it. Is, uh, yeah, it's not working out. I don't know what it would be said in... Hungarian. I know they've got their own, their own name for it, but it's something I can't pronounce. Probably. Yeah, it's I'd probably, probably spit something. in this food if I was trying to pronounce it, so that's <laughs> probably a good thing. And then there's a little bit of ketchup, a couple ketchup. tablespoons of ketchup. Yep. This is just trying to make it, I guess, a little more tomatoey. Yeah. And then this is what's interesting vinegar. Vinegar. Because I've seen a lot of them, and, and I guess this is where, so it's two couple tablespoons of vinegar. Yeah. You um, said equal parts of vinegar and ketchup. You know, and then again, here she goes with, well, sometimes you might want to do a little more ketchup. Than, I mean, I, how do you know? Because uh, you can't, you can't taste it and see. She won't even yeah. let you take a piece of side. <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to have a little bit of a little meatball on the right, side. Make right, sure right. it tastes good. I want to make sure it's flavorable. Well, I guess when I'm officially taking it over, I'm going to probably wind up doing it my way. I'm sure. <laughs> and she She won't. still makes it every year, a couple times a year. So what I think is interesting about this is I don't, and I could be completely wrong, and Grandma, if I am, I apologize. Mom, totally apologize. I don't remember putting vinegar in ours when we made stuff. But what I do remember doing, which I noticed you don't do, is we would use sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Like we would literally put like sauerkraut between the layers when we were putting it in. Yeah. And again, I could totally have this wrong. Oh, but in my the, head, that's what I remember. And I kind of, I feel like it's the same type of idea where you get that kind of sweet, salt, uh, sour. Right kind of a mixture going on. And that's the difference in the cultures too, you know? Right, right. What they did. Okay, so we have our meat prepped. We have the sauce ready to go. We right. have the cabbage cooked right. and ready to go. So we've got to start rolling this stuff up, huh? Right, that's the fun part. So this is the one thing you got to do is if, if you see the vein thing on there, it's so thick. Yeah. You got to trim that down, right? Yep. I mean, she, always said that, she always said to just cut that back with a little knife. With a little paring knife, look yeah. at me. A little paring knife. So we'll want to actually trim this vein. Perfect. Just to get some of that. Perfect. Just to get some of that off, so it's a little and, thinner. And it makes it easier for rolling as well. Why don't you start? Start showing me how how this is done. Okay. Because uh, I mean, you're rolling it like a burrito almost, right? Yeah. Uh, the similarities. Um, she didn't always overstuff them just enough, and then she. I'll, growing up, they were always very small. Now. Every time I see them, they're just bigger. 
Well, she can afford like, more pork now. Oh, okay. that, I mean, that and uh, you know, oh, the leaves are so much bigger. So they okay. are big leaves, aren't they? Yeah. So we'll just take a little bit of a little portion of. Uh, that seems like too small for that huge leaf. What this portion? Yeah. That little well, part. we're gonna make it tight. You want to oh. make it nice and tight. You don't want to leave any air in there. So like a little bit in there. You want to roll it over a couple times, and then come in. She also said if it's too, too leafy on the ends, you can always trim off, but it's okay because this is part of the meal, you know. You want it nice and tight, then you want to pack it in the dish real tight. And every one that goes in after, you pack it real tight in, and then you go on top and you pack it real tight in. So okay, we can continue so to do the same thing. When, you can keep going with that as we're talking. When, uh, <laughs> I'm okay. to work today, right? That's fine. When I've always done it, I kind of try to peel the leaves off first and prep them. Exactly. Because I want to put some of the leaves on the bottom, but the best leaves seem to be t towards the outside. They're easier to roll. Yes. You know what I mean? When you yeah. get to the bottom ones, well, you're like... You're absolutely right. You do want to put leaves on the bottom, and you want to put some of the leaves that you're not going to use also on the top. It also creates, like, a, it steams. Even when you're baking it, it so it'll, it'll steam the cabbage. It'll keep it nice and moist. Obviously, um, there's so much water in cabbage. So with the sauce and the cabbage, it's, it's just gonna, it's a lot of love in one pot. That's what I call it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it would be. So your kids eat this stuff when you make it for them? Or? Well, how old, um, are, your how old well, are your kids? My, my oldest is five. Kids. My oldest is five. Okay. And my youngest is I can't imagine getting the 11 months. Eat this. 11 months, so he's almost a year. Now he's at that, he's getting teeth and he eats anything in sight. So did my five-year-old, but now He's talking and has an opinion, and everything <laughs> don't look good. Um, he's not eating this and that, but he ate it all, you know, in his early ages, and now he just puts his nose up to it. Now he's like he doesn't like it. Yeah. I, so remember, I remember a time, they, and they go through phases, right, where they only eat certain foods. Yeah. Like, I remember there was a time my daughter wouldn't eat hot dogs. Yeah. For, like, two years. And then there was a time where that seemed like all she would eat would be hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. Oh, my God. Now it's... Getting her to eat something like this would have been nearly impossible back then yeah now it's uh it's not he doesn't like sauce on pasta Let me roll a few of those so i can <laughs> run out of meat even look at that now he likes his plain pasta no sauce do you butter or something like this so parmesan cheese only. you know what your grandmother would be so proud because he wants to eat the food completely bland <laughs> this is it's the old world tradition that you're you're, you're instilling in him that's yeah, perfect absolutely I feel like this could be like a serious production line here. Oh, yeah. It See, was. Now mine is fat. You it go was. for like the... Yeah, she says make it real tight. Really? I don't know. I've made mine really loose. Okay. And pack it tight. I don't know. But yeah. anyway. You probably won't have enough for one more, right? Yeah, probably. These I'm leaves gonna are kind of big. start laying these on the bottom. These, yeah, so these, these leaves are kind of big. Um, I, mean, I think it's, again, just it soaks up some of the juice. Uh, right makes it easier to work with. So you work here at the student center, right? Yes. You're the chef there? Uh, production manager, chef. OK. How, how long have you been doing that? Uh, being a chef, or how long have I been <laughs> working down there? Working down there. Working for um, Temple. How long have you been at Temple? Um, going about a year and a half. This, this December coming up would be full two years. Nice. Yeah, I came in like right it? in the middle. Um, challenging, fun. Some days it's overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, I want to say pull my hair out. Obviously, I have no hair. Um, and maybe you did already pull your hair out. It really was challenging. The Look business, how challenging this Yeah, the, <laughs> the business definitely makes you want to pull your hair out. That's anywhere in this business, right? Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's different. I've never, uh, I never had an opportunity to work in education, um, so it's definitely... I mean, I'm a little biased, but I'm a huge fan of Temple. I've been here a long time. Yeah. So uh, I have nothing bad to say about Temple. I never have. Okay, so... Now we're going to get rid of that. Okay. We're going to lay these in here? Yeah, we're going to lay them in here. I mean, obviously, if we had a hundred of these, we'd be packed, jam-packed these tight in here. Real airtight. What is that? That just makes like keeps, keeps everything together. Um, keeps the juices in because obviously juices when you're important. when you when you cut into these, they're it's not a dry product. It's very juicy. So this is about as tight as we're gonna go. I'm gonna push it down a little bit. Okay. 
and afterwards, um, what we'll do is we'll lay the sauce in here and any well, other. Ahead. And what any are you waiting on? What do you mean afterwards? Lay the sauce in there. Let's get this stuff in the oven, man. I'm hungry. Okay, and then we'll just ladle the sauce right over the top. Again, you don't want this to dry out. I mean, it's not going to, but. Not at all. And it's a complete meal. I mean. And uh, one of the things she always said too. Oh, you really too, loaded that in there, didn't you? Well, yeah, it's going to suck it all up. <laughs> um, she also said if you had extra product, throw that into the sauce. Even to me, it's not safe, but. Um, it's going to cook for hours. And that's it's, 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 its own sauce gravy type thing. Um, and that's your. It'll bring out the. <laughs> It'll bring out the love into the I was going to say Italian, but you're Irish. I forgot. Yeah. I was like, that's your Italian. Well, I know a lot of uh, traditional gravy. Italian uh, <laughs> things, but coming up in the business. So I, I say gravy because a lot of Italians say gravy. Does anybody make fun of you for that? Non no. Italians? It depends on who you're around. Some, someone will argue that it's sauce. Someone will argue that it's gravy. Uh, I just say I only call it gravy if there's meat in it. Uh, there you go. Try to put it to bed real fast. All right. So we've got... So we got it all in there. And we layered it up on top. Yeah, so what, then, what we could do is uh, we could put a little sheet over it. What mom used to do, which I wouldn't do here, is uh, she would stick another dish on top of it to weigh it down, but we're not going to do that wow, here. She really wanted it tight. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's no joke. Like, uh, what is she weighing it down for? Uh, just, I don't know, just to keep all the air out of it. I don't, I don't know. She didn't make a lot of sense because, in, in, you know, thinking of it in culinary now that you're, like, I was going to say, now that you're I said, if I weigh this down, I'm going to have juices all over the bottom of the oven. The smoke alarms are going to go off. Um, you know, we're going to have a problem here at the building. <laughs> and I guess that's how it works, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's get this in the oven. All right. Oven takes a second to come around. It's you not. Want me to stop it. No, don't stop it. No time for that. Get All that right. in the oven. That's going to bake for two, it three could be hours. Two hours. She said three hours. She said four hours. I said, Mom, how long? She's like, Well, so it's done. It depends on how much you're making. We're right. doing a small batch. So I'm, I'm pretty bad comfortable with an hour and a half to two yeah, hours. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, when you're making 80 to 100 of them, yeah, you, it, it could go all day. I mean, you're so anxious at home to eat it. No, it's got to cook. It's well, got to cook. I think it's fascinating to stem in the oven. I mean, like I said, we always use a crock pot. I've actually heard of people doing it on a stove, which that, seems and, like and my grandmother, very difficult. My grandmother did it on the stove. Her mom did it in the oven. So she always does it like her grandmom and not like her right. mother. She said it doesn't cook as evenly on the it stove. Seems like it'd be a lot harder it burns, on the stove. It burns. Burn the sauce, like, yeah. yeah, the cabbage sticks. It's, it's a mess. She said she doesn't like it. Now my aunts still like to do it the way my grandmother does it. I don't. And they also use beef. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I think it just I don't like the taste of it. Well, I can't so wait to, to taste. Beef dries that. out for some reason. Pork keeps that that. It always. I, I yeah. actually eat my burgers in the summertime. I like to put pork in my meat when Ooh, I make really? my burgers. Yeah. It makes them really juicy. They kind of ball up a little bit more. They don't stay as flat. Interesting. I think that's delicious myself. <laughs> I'm, I can't wait to try it. I'm very fascinated. Yeah, I, I can't wait either. So while this thing is still cooking, uh, why don't we talk a little bit more about how you got, how you, how'd you get into cooking? How'd you become a chef? Like what made you decide this, this is, is the field I want to be in? You know what um, I mean? Why not a doctor, lawyer, or whatever? <laughs> that's funny. Um, <laughs> what I, I was, when I was a teenager, uh, I was about 14, 15 years old. I was working with my brother in a deli that prepared a lot of stuff. Okay. So they did a lot of scratch cooking, and obviously they made a lot of sandwiches. It was a Jewish deli, and they worked for this very stern Jewish man. And uh, one day, you know, the week was brewing up. You know, they were having police were clashing with the guy because he's very strict about his food and how he wants things done. Like most chefs and are. And one time, one time, the guy that worked for him for 20 plus years just walked out. <laughs> and he said, I need you to get downstairs and follow that book and make these soups. And I don't know. And I started doing all this crazy stuff. And it sounds like every it. kitchen on the planet. And I don't know. I just started like, oh, I think I could do this for a living. You know, and I started doing it, doing it, doing it. And then I don't know. And then everybody wanted to start meeting me and wanted to know what, it, you know, what I was doing and my background. And obviously, I didn't have any background except working for this right. guy. So I started pursuing it more and working more and learning it more with his business and then got into culinary school. It's awesome. And it just took off from there, and, and that was it. And, and that's so what I guess we're lucky that that's how it worked. I mean, it, it could have been, you could have been at a doctor's office, and the guy could have walked out, and you could have had to go in and do some <laughs> surgery or something. It could have been a <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it smells like it's about ready. Yeah, it's just so about ready. Let's, let's get that out of here and, and taste it. 
Not put it on a sheet pan. You don't usually do that in your oven. No, because they have them big oven pans at home that right. just I, I did it because ours out. are solid. Right. It's just easier to get them in and out of. At home, you have the little slots. You can easily just put your pan right on there. It's well, fine. and obviously, we, we want to make sure we don't let nothing drips over at home. See. They don't care. <laughs> ah, smells Does that great. look like what it's supposed to look like? I mean, yeah, it looks good. All right, do you usually eat the stuff on top? No. <laughs> now, my brother, yeah, he, he, my older brother would he eat, eat the stuff eat on everything, top. Everything, everything. Oh my God, it smells just like my grandmother's house. Oh, that was one thing I remembered as a kid. Uh, you know, you come in after running around, playing, riding your bike, and as soon as you hit the door and you have that smell, and you're like, oh man, mom's making galumki. I know that's her. I know that's right? what she's making. You didn't even have to question, you knew the smell. You knew exactly what was going on. Let's get you a roll here. All right. They look great. All right. Well, he definitely. Uh, they look about right, right? Yeah, it looks about right. We uh, we would cut it up and we would also ladle some more sauce on there. I mean, if you, if you wanted it, if you wanted to eat it the way that it was. Um, a lot of times I would obviously start salt and pepper and everything. That's what she started. Because <laughs> well, that's when you're allowed to. She started yeah, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're allowed. Did you want me to grab the salt again? Did you want to add more? Or? Nah, it's all right. Yeah. We'll try it. <laughs> we'll try to make sure everything's just right. Um, kind of cabbage could probably go a little longer, but it's not bad. The inside's great. I guess that's the reason why she cooked it for so long all day because right. the cabbage has got to be like butter. And I can see like the difference between, like I said, my the one that I grew up with and this. The meat is much whiter, obviously, yes. because it's pork. Yeah. Um, used to have a little more color than that, but right. You ready? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get it out of here. <laughs> Well, your mom would be making fun of you now. Like, oh, yeah. clearly you didn't do that right. Look how much tough, how yeah. tough it is for him to get that going. Yeah, because I didn't. Uh, All right, I'm eating some with right, or without you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Cheers. Not bad. Not bad. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Very close. <laughs> well, that's all you can ask for when you don't have a real recipe, right? Yeah, when she can't give you the exact amounts of the dash and the Close as all you can get. Well, thank you for stopping by. I hey, really appreciate it. No this. problem. I'm, I'm just happy that I get me. to have uh, stuffed cabbage. I haven't had it in years. This is very yeah. exciting for me. Uh, yep, I haven't had it probably since the wintertime. So. Right. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us here on Baker Day Presents. And a special thanks to Chef Joe for bringing his delicious stuffed cabbage recipe. It took me right back to my childhood. Join us again next time on Baker Day Presents, and remember, every recipe has a story.